Hey everybody, Ethan here and you're on my side of the room. In this video, I just have a couple of odds and ends that just don't fit neatly into any other video. Really, or not enough footage to make it a standalone thing, really. <laughs> uh, so the first thing is this past weekend, we say goodbye to the Sire V3 base. And so now I only have the Zematis and the Greco. After further ado. So... I don't regret it. The thing about it is, is that I traded up to where I'm at now. Um, and not so much traded up like I didn't like to say take the Donner and then get the Schecter and the Schecter and get the Stingray and all this. But what I mean by trading up is as opportunities presented themselves to get better bases in this case, I took them. And having done so, then I also took the opportunity to get rid of the thing that just wasn't winning out as a result of that uh, set of maneuvers. So I've been saying over and over, just the thing is it's not making the cut on these videos. So this is the video to explicitly say the sire was utterly outclassed by the Zamatis and the Greco. Um, it's not a bad base. It's not something like I'm not trashing it saying don't ever buy it. What I'm saying is that for me personally, had I not ever bought anything better than the Sire, I would have thought, wow, this is a great base and this is my best base and so on and so forth. But I did buy something better. And because of that, the Sire just became harder and harder to justify keeping around. Unlike other people, I don't have scads of basses or guitars behind me unless I want to Photoshop some in and I can make that happen. <laughs> um, and I don't take away from them that they like doing that. It's just that's not me. I would rather focus on what I do use. And in the case of the Sire, it just it wasn't getting played. And to the point where I had to force myself to play it. And when that happened, that was a massive red flag. Like, I, sh I shouldn't have to force myself to play the bass. You know, whereas I no problem reach for the Zamatis or the Greco alternately uh, and kind of go on runs of it for a while of, like, pick one and then pick the other. But it's never at the expense of each other. It's always just, you know, I just feel like picking this one up and using this one today. And I'm not worse off for that decision. There is a school of thought about, well, don't you want one garbage base around so that you don't care what happens to it? And what if you get some trash gig where like it's a sketchy neighborhood or you know it gets beat on or what if it's stolen? That kind of begs the question like, should I be booking such gigs? And that's that's a conversation for a later time. That's not something that's an immediate concern. Uh, with the CSL, my gear goes straight in the building and straight back out. I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, distance between points A and B in that regard. I go straight in, straight out, right to the car, and right home. There's no screwing around. Um, so I went to Guitar Center, traded it in, got bought half back that I paid for it, which, great. <laughs> uh, that's what happened with the, the Stingray. It, it was a similar situation. I took it to the Guitar Center again after getting it from them and got about half back for it. So that seems to be the consistent trend. It was funny that the guy who did the transaction, he was saying to the store manager, like, I don't get, like, why is this here? Like, why is he doing this? And she was just kind of like, shrug? <laughs> you know, but had he asked me, I would have said, why well, I just got better bases and to the point where I just couldn't justify it. The thing that finally sank the Sire V3 once and for all was I played the exact same song three times on the three different bases to check out how they performed under the exact same amp settings, same everything else. And the Sire just wasn't better. And the funny thing is it's got Active Electronics as an option. Well, most of the time I kept it in passive because the active was such a nightmare to screw around with. And after a while, it wasn't really getting me anything other than frustrated. And whereas I could just pick these up and play them and sound good. That's what I want. Pick it up, 
play it sound good. Bam, there you go. If you want easy bullet points, there they are. Um, and in the case of the Sire, I just wasn't getting that. It was just, okay, flick it to passive because I don't want to put up with nonsense. And then that was questionable. Switch it to active for variety, and then that was questionable. So, bye. <laughs> I just, I'm happy with what I have. And if anything else comes along, I will let you know. All right, in other news, I got another tattoo. <laughs> so in our last episode, I got this one, which is coming along nicely. I put tattoo goo on it every day. Um, and now I got a calf one. <laughs> so I'll get into that story in a moment, but here's some footage of that experience just to commemorate it for the channel. That's right, I'm back for more. It's Thursday night, and it's time to get inked up. Because that apparently is how I roll. Get it and like it. That's their motto. <laughs> Alright, so today's episode is I texted my tattoo artist, and she's busy with another customer at this moment, so I kind of feel like when I didn't get any response back, she was probably, you know, busy doing other stuff. Um, but I said, don't worry, I'm not canceling. <laughs> My thing was, is like, I'm booked for an hour, and it turns out they close at 7 -ish. And my appointment's at 6 -ish. My plan was something fairly simple-ish, ish, ish, based on how it went last time. However, I wanted to know, like, is there any kind of room to kind of stretch the limits and do something a little more involved, maybe, sort of, kind of? Because I don't know what goes into it. I don't want to be that guy who's like, you know, do some kind of Rembrandt and do it in 30 minutes or less. That's not realistic, and I know that. Uh, but I don't know what the timing of tattooing is for, like, what kind of design. So I'm here deliberately early, hoping we can pre-chat to talk about some options and if not today, then like another booking. There's apparently always another booking at this point. <laughs> uh, but I also have to, I have a cruise coming up, so I don't want to have too much of this stuff freshly applied when that happens. Uh, so this might be it for the month, and then I just come back in May and do something else. Or whatever, we'll see. Anyway, it's hurry up and wait time. Alright, my appointment was at 6, it's 7.15, actually later than that. I uh, can't rush art is the deal. Um, I feel bad. Like, on the one hand, I don't feel bad because I had a 6 o'clock appointment and I was here at 5.30. On the other hand, it's like, I don't know what all went down with this prior appointment. I don't know if there was shenanigans about, you know, oh, this is just some simple idea and it turned into some colossal undertaking or what. But it was like this girl's whole thigh. Like, oh my god, you know. And Kimmy works fast, I noticed. <laughs> but, I mean, there's just limits to the, the art form, you know. Uh, so my design I'm going with here should be pretty breezy easy comparatively speaking it's just this place closes at 7 so I hate that people are like having the lights on on my account but I'm not the only one here so that's the good news I guess <laughs> um, seemed to be a lot of impulse tattoo action going on while I was waiting like a whole bunch of girls came in and did crazy tattoos that I don't quite get what they were doing and why, but they did it. So that was the entertainment. Anyway, hurrying up and waiting is the deal today. All right, Kimmy, just give me this thumbs up at 7.30 here. <laughs> she worked up the design, so we'll see how we do. All right, see how we're doing here. Let's get in frame. There we go. All right, well, we went a little OT, but <laughs> I think in the end it's worth it here. So, yeah. This feels like art unto itself. I might frame that. <laughs> kind of gross, but, you know. So here's Kimmy again. <laughs> Thanks for staying super late. No problem. I appreciate it. <laughs> 
sucks that it happened, but we got it done. That's rock and roll. <laughs> All right. So having seen what you saw, um, it was funny. The calf hurts. In fact, it still hurts right now as I film this. Um, not excruciatingly, but more so when it was being done. But the after pain has been noticeable. Uh, but I don't regret it. You know, I guess that's, that's good for tattoos if you don't regret them, right? Um, the thing that I had her do, it was going to be a line art paw print of my late dog. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, uh-uh, no, finish it. Finish, fill it in. And she's like, but do you know how much pain that's going to be? Just do it. I mean, I'm already in pain. Let's just keep at it. You know, I, I would rather do it now, get it done with, and then be happy with the result rather than be unhappy with the result and go back in for more pain after the pain of the first time around and then the pain of looking at a half-finished job, basically. And that's, it's not fair to the, the tattoo place. You see, I don't want them to come off like they're a bunch of, you know, hacks or something when it was me telling them to do stuff. So I'm much more pleased, as I hoped, with the end result where it's the solid paw print. And if you see me from a distance, you can tell that's what that is. Had that not been the case, it wouldn't have been as obvious as to what was on my leg, other than some sort of tattoo. So to that end, this is not a sponsored channel. It never is. If it ever is, I will let you know. I 100% promise you I will tell you if I'm ever sponsored or I ever get free stuff from somebody, I will certainly disclose that. I have no problem doing that whatsoever. So it's a completely unsolicited testimonial for me to say that Fallen Heroes Tattoo in Kissimmee, Florida, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend Kimmy. Just don't book up Kimmy to the point that I can't because <laughs> I'm looking to go back in May to have more stuff done. But yeah, I'm, I'm very, very over the moon pleased with how it's gone so far and then I just I like the shop overall I like the quality of Kimmy's work so I will be back I'm a very happy customer and I'll be happy to share how that goes as more details become available so having said all that like I said kind of a tids and bits video today but just some stuff to tell you um, to that end, thanks for watching, keep playing, keep learning, and I'll catch you in the next video.